It's actually getting to the point where it's, I'm sorry to say, it's a repeat of the last two years. You think these interest rates coming down is going to make houses more affordable? Think again. We're in the middle of February right now. And since those mortgage rates came down from their peak in September, October, we have a frenzy of buyers back out into the market. And what have I been saying for the past, I don't know, few weeks, months, what is it doing? It's bringing back the bidding wars. And now it's actually getting to the point where it's, I'm sorry to say, it's a repeat of the last two years. It is. Just recently, I'm hearing agents saying they're having 100, 200 people walking through their open houses, and the bidding wars are as bad as they were in the last two years. So what is going to make houses more affordable? More homes. Yeah, we need to increase that inventory. The National Association of Home Builders have just come out and said that in order to fix this problem, you need to build more houses. And recently, Congress had just met. They're making this their focus to address the affordability crisis here in this country. So that's what I'm talking about today. And so let's get into this right now. So let me start this off by saying we have a shortage of homes in this country of about 4 million homes. 4 million homes. What did you say? And this all goes back to 2006 to 2008 during that Great Recession. When the housing market crashed, things went awry and builders left the industry. So therefore, they stopped building homes and we have not kept up with that demand. Now in 2020, maybe just prior to 2020, enter the millennials. The millennials have reached the age of now that they can buy a home and there aren't enough homes out there for them. It's pretty sad and it's scary at the same time. Recently, the National Association of Home Builders had testified in front of Congress about this issue. They commended Senate Banking Committee Chairman Sherrod Brown and Ranking Member Tim Scott and the fellow committee members for finally addressing this issue and making this their focus to help solve this problem for Americans. The National Association of Home Builders Chief Economist Robert Deitz went on to say, we applaud the committee for making housing a top national priority and allowing the NAHB to share its views on the barriers the residential construction industry faces to increase the production of quality, affordable housing. Building more homes and apartments is the only way to tame inflation, satisfy unmet demand, achieve a measure of price stability in the for sale and rental markets, and ease America's housing affordability crisis. The primary challenge of the housing market is the lack of attainable, affordable housing, both single family and multifamily markets stemming from a lack of construction over the prior decade that has resulted in a structural deficit of 1.5 million residences. So just in the last 10 years, there's been a deficit of 1.5 million homes. So how are we going to solve this for the builders? All right. Do you think it's just that easy? Well, they could, you know, builders are, they're back in the business. Let's just make, build more homes. Okay. There's a lot that goes on with that. And they have had a lot of barriers that they have to overcome in order to achieve building these homes. Now, according to Dietz, the causes of the L underbuilding in this country today is they label them as the five L's, the lack of labor, lots, lumber and building materials, lending for development and construction purposes, and legal and regulatory barriers. He also went on to cite some facts of what actually is going on in the construction industry right now. The construction sector actually faces a persistent shortage of labor. They are short 400,000 jobs. Oh, come on! Oh, my word. 400,000 jobs that are just available in the construction industry. He also went on to say regulatory costs account for about a quarter of the price of a new single family home. It's even more for apartment buildings due to delay cost and zoning issues. When they go to build these buildings, they always run into zoning problems. He also said that there's regulatory burdens that make it difficult for these builders to build single family affordable homes. He also went on to say that because of the supply chain disruptions, material costs are up 36% since 2020. 
So therefore, that in turn results in higher price for the homes, and it's also higher rents. Dietz also went on to say, unfortunately, construction of new affordable rental housing is often impossible without some type of public support, such as the low-income housing tax credit or tax-exempt bond programs. Now, here's another fact that was brought up here, and this is really disturbing. According to the latest National Association of Home Builders and Wells Fargo Housing Opportunity Index, 38% of new and existing family homes are affordable to families earning the U.S. median income of $90,000. This is the lowest affordability measure on this index in the post-Great Recession period. Let that sink in. Hey, stop right there. I'm not going to let you watch anymore until you hit the like. And while you're at it, you can subscribe because I'm sure you're loving this information I'm giving you right now. So thanks. 38% of homes are affordable to people in this country right now that have an income of $90,000 a year. That's just mind blowing. <laughs> We, we knew it was bad, but oh my God, that's bad. It's really bad. So Dietz went to call on Congress to say, hey, you guys got to do something. <laughs> You've got to make some changes here. And especially alleviating those regulatory burdens that they put on these builders. And look, you know, it's the government. And do we want the government getting involved in this? I mean, to help the situation, are there things they can do? I think they can. I mean, these regulatory things that they put on the builders, I think maybe we can, like, let's revisit them and see, are they all necessary? Okay, look, you can all share your, your thoughts and your feedback on this. What do you all think about this? Do you think this is something that the government can actually do? Can they alleviate these regulatory burdens that they put on these builders? I mean, look, I understand a lot of it's for safety reasons and things like that, but let's be real. Do we really think that it's all for the purpose of safety and environmental and all that stuff? I mean, come on. Do we really think that? Let me know in the comments below. How do you feel about that? We all know there's like bogus regulatory stuff that the government slaps on people. So maybe it's time. Let's go back and revisit this and, and alleviate some of those burdens from the builders so they're able to go ahead and build at a cheaper cost than passing that along to the consumer. Deet says here that he feels by making houses more available, building more homes is actually going to help inflation. And I, I agree with that. As much as I don't like the government getting involved with things, I don't. I think they do have to step in here and make some changes, especially on the regulatory end. They got to make things easier for these builders. If it's one way to help bring down the costs, and so be it. I mean, Americans need a home right now. We do. We're in a really tough situation and people need a place to live and the interest rates aren't going to help. Sorry, Sorry to say, say, it's not. So another thing that Deed said is that because there's such a labor shortage, there needs to be more emphasis on promoting the skilled trades. Look, college has been forced down our throats for a long time, like old, like since the 80s, right? Let's get back into the trades. There is such a need for builders, for construction workers, plumbers, electricians, all of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you can do pretty darn well when you're working in a trade. So that's something else we need to focus on too. And I feel like a lot of high schools these days have got a, gotten away from the wood shop, the metal shop, all the things. I mean, look, I'm not saying for every high school, but a lot of them have gotten away from that just because... College has been the primary focus. And I'm not going to share my thoughts on that because I could go on for days about that topic. And I'm just, I'm not going to touch that one right now. But we do need to promote the trades like heavily and like now. We need to start doing that. As you know, I'm always going to share with you my opinion and what I think. And this is what I think. I'm glad to see that the, the banking committee is taking a look at this and they're making this their primary focus. But again, we're talking about the government. Let's hope that they follow through and they help these builders achieve what they need to achieve in getting these homes built. Let me know your thoughts about this. What do you think? Do you think what Congress is doing, you know, taking this into consideration and making this their primary focus, do you think they're actually going to help? Do you think they're really going to help the builders here? and make some progress in getting more homes built to meet the demand of our buyers? Let me know what you think. I'm really curious to know. So if you really liked what you watched here today, I have another great playlist over here. I highly recommend you check that out. You're going to learn a lot. 
you're going to learn a lot because I talk about all this stuff and, and I'm always giving my opinion. So thank you so much for joining me today to get your dose of real estate reality. My name is Jackie Baker and I will see you next time.